His face and eyes always look to the east. In his life, he's made about 14,000 predictions, as 12,000 of them have come true and 2,000 are about to happen in the future. West and Shock are forced to leave and are banned, and Dr. Hawass defines their findings as American hallucinations. When we talk or read about Egypt, we mention the Great Pyramids or the ancient hieroglyphs that the civilizations before us have left us as a guidelines for our growth as civilization. But the focus today is on the mystery of the Great Sphinx of Giza. Who built it? Why was it built? And is the mystical hole of the Chronicles really underneath it, full of wisdom of ancient civilizations? What are the coded messages and why even the Egyptians themselves flee from these discoveries? We'll try to understand in the new episode of Secret Origins. Welcome. Nowadays, experts still cannot be explicit in the statement who built the ancient monument and also what secrets it hides. The question of who is the builder of the pyramids is one of those who torment thousands of archaeologists, historians and fanatics. From today's point of view, most Egyptologists believe that the Sphinx was built on the order of Hafre. He is the fourth pharaoh of the fourth dynasty son of a Khufu, as it's considered that Hafre ordered his face to be carved or his brothers instead of the lion's head of the Sphinx. The face of the Sphinx reveals the features of Pharaoh Khafre and on this occasion in April 1991, an interesting article appeared in National Geographic and a year later in Cambridge Archaeological Journal. The author Mark Lenner from the Research Institute of the East at University of Chicago wants to prove for sure that this is the face of the pharaoh and creates an interesting computer simulation. Before we continue, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, press the bell so you don't miss the new videos every single week. In the beginning, we put together a network model on the screen of the computer and turned the photos into 2.6 million surface points to be able to cover the skeleton with skin. We reconstructed pictures of the Sphinx as it may have looked a thousand years ago. To restore the face, I tested pictures of other pharaohs and sphinxes on our model. With the face of the Khafre, the Sphinx just aroused for life. Mark Lenner is a very respected scientist and his experiments at first glance seem logical. A bit later, however, was found that his work has a small but a very serious drawback. However, thanks to him, it is known that the head of the Sphinx is quite small compared to the body and this by itself is a proof that the head was changed millennia ago and probably more than once. The interesting point is that the noted discrepancy does not occur in other sphinxes in Egypt, only in this one. Their proportions are harmonious. The official version that Khafre ordered it is known to all, but is there any evidence of this? Of course not. The only proof that caught all Egyptologists' attention is a found syllable on the granite stella of the sphinx. Tutmos IV himself tells that once when he was hunting, he came across the sacred path of the gods, as he called it, which led from Heliopolis to Giza. He got tired, laid in the shadow of the Sphinx, in a place which, according to him, was called a wonderful area of the first era. When he fell asleep in his dream, the Sphinx appeared and told him, I am your ancestor, here am Ahet, created by Ra Aten, told him he would give him the throne and a long happy reign if he frees him from the desert sand, covering him almost to the head. Tutmos IV follows the instructions, releases the Sphinx and reigns on the throne. 
Also, in all inscriptions of Egyptian dynasties throughout the era, pharaoh's names are always circled in ellipses called cartouche. Isn't it strange that the name of a, such a powerful ruler is carved on a granite without cartouche? Even if it happened, this means that no one has noticed this mistake for thousands of years, which is impossible. The conclusion that researchers reach is that here it was never about the name of any ruler. Whether the Sphinx dates from the period 7000 to 5000 BC or much older and was built by the ancient Atlantean civilization, one thing has not changed over the millennia. His face and eyes always look to the east. Okay, but what does this mean? The lion's body is located on the west-east axis of Giza at 30 degree latitude. The sphinx's gaze is directed exactly in the direction of the sunrise in the spring, just when the day and night are equal, meaning the spring equinox. It seems as if the sphinx is far more special than the definitions it is given by the official scientific communities. We have known from the Sumerian about the great importance of the 30 degree latitude. After the flood, the kingdom came from heaven to earth. The kingdom was in Eridu. Eridu was also located right next to the 30 degree latitude as well as the spiritual center of Heliopolis, the holy city of Indian culture Harappa in the city of Lhasa. Tibet. Even to this day, the sacred center is located at 30 degrees latitude. On February 16, 1932, archaeologists discovered the tomb of Tutankhamun, also known as King Tut, who hasn't been touched for more than 3,000 years. Up until 1930, many discoveries were made, but probably the most amazing one is what happened in 1935, when a massive project in Giza has been completed and its findings shock everyone. One of the main people in the project, Hamilton Wright, shares, We discovered underground tunnels used by the ancient Egyptians dating from 5000 years BC. They are a path that leads right between the second pyramid of the Sphinx. From these underground tunnels we found a series of shafts and crevices leading to more than 125 foot down with huge holes and ancillary smaller rooms. Exactly right and his team discovered some kind of underground city under the plateau of Giza and for the rest of the year articles and stories appeared in academic journals which showed new details, buildings, walls, rooms and corridors. Photos were taken and shown to selected experts who were as expected extremely impressed. Not every day you have the chance to see what is under the Giza Plateau. And then, one day, however, without warning, history disappears and everything is covered. The Egyptian government and local Egyptologists almost close the case and direct the main attention of all foreign archaeologists to the Egyptian tombs and treasures. But the question remains. Why do you suddenly decide to ignore a discovery of this caliber, literally a mini city below Giza? The answer comes from historian Jerry Cannon, author of the book The Secrets of Giza Plateau and the location of the Second Sphinx revealed. No one knows what's up there, says Cannon, and if they find out, they will throw all their books away and the whole history through the window. Of course, we can't help but wonder what is it that's hidden under the Sphinx that it has the power to change all of humanity. But perhaps on the other hand comes the fear that we all know so far is one big lie. Neither Hamilton Wright nor Cannon is the first to mention the secrets under the Sphinx. 
In the 5th century BC, the Greek philosopher Herodotus wrote his historical short stories and told about his journey to Egypt, where he claims to have been shown the legendary labyrinth of Egypt. What we know about the labyrinth in question is that it is a hidden underground complex that contains the notes of all lost knowledge of ancients before the Great Flood. Ancient Atlanteans, for example. And during his journey, Herodotus tells. There I saw 12 palaces that were connected by terraces. It's hard to believe that they were made by man. The mysterious and enigmatic corridors between rooms and halls were endless wonders for me. As we passed from large courtyards to rooms through galleries, Again, through more rooms and more courtyards, the roof of each room, yard and gallery is like the walls made of stone. The walls are covered with engraved figures and each hall is made of white marble with columns on the sides. To each corner where the labyrinth ends, there is a pyramid about 240 feet high. This is about 73 meters with engraved animals and underground passages through which can be passed. I was told that the underground rooms and corridors connect this pyramid with the pyramids in Memphis. Let's dive deeper into this hypothesis. It's claimed that the original builders of the Sphinx belonged to an extremely high race intelligent beings and one of their secret chambers contains their accumulated knowledge. Even more astonishing is the story of the Arab historian Masudi, who says the following. These secret tunnels contain morals of wisdom and achievements in the various arts and sciences and are hidden so deep that they can remain as notes and guidelines for those who will use them over time. Is all of this even possible and is it real? If not, why all of them historians talk about the same thing and why these stories are not at all mentioned or ignored in the modern times that we live in? Herodotus is far from being the only ancient historian and philosopher who spoke of an underworld in Egypt. The first century Greek philosopher Strabo also claims to have seen the maze, which he describes as a great palace constructed from a multitude of palaces. As well as its peer, the Roman author Pliny the Elder writes about a puzzling labyrinth made of paths that build an entire underground complex. At about the same time, the Greek historian Diodorus gives a similar description of the labyrinth. When a man enters the sacred place, he will find a temple surrounded by columns 40 of a site. This building has a roof made of single stone carved with panels and richly decorated with excellent paintings. They contain memoirs of each king's homeland as well as the temples and the sacrifices that were made. All of this skillfully done in drawings of majestic beauty. We do not know if you've heard of the American clairvoyant Edgar Cayce. He was an exceptional person, not by accident called the sleeping prophet because literally told his prophecies in his dream. We know it may sound weird, but stay with us. Casey made thousands of predictions in the 20th century before his death in 1945 and was quite accurate. He predicted the collapse of the comedy exchange in 1929, World War II, the death of two American presidents, the fall of the Soviet Union and a bunch of other important events. He was so good that a stenographer was hired to stand next to him while he sleeps to record all all his predictions during sleep. In his life he's made about 14,000 predictions as 12,000 of them have come true and 2,000 are about to happen in the future. From all of them he's made one small mistake. He once received a letter from France in which a man asked him to see his health but he was wrong predicting the condition of his twin brother. This is his only mistake. 
But where is the connection with ancient Egypt? In one of these recorded prophecies, he says that the mystical hall of chronicles or wisdom will be discovered in the 90s under the pole of the Great Sphinx in Giza. He says that the Sphinx is not 4,500 years old as it was accepted back then, but more than 10,000 years old. In the same way, Thoth also says that in the underground near the Sphinx, there is a room where objects are hidden which prove that there were advanced civilizations on Earth about 500 million years ago. As compared to them, we're just some children. Todd himself tells that for 500 million years civilizations existed, but about 5.5 million years something catastrophic happened and it affects our familiar Akashic records. But let's go back to the Sphinx. Another thing that doesn't correspond to what we've been thought and the official information, here things are starting to get very strange. And this is the damage to the other structures and monuments for which are supposed to have been built at the same time, carved by sand and wind, which support the thesis that they're about 4,000 years old. But the cracks in the Sphinx look like they were made of water. According to the official science, the Great Pyramid and the Sphinx were built around 4,500 years ago during the time of Cheops and the Fourth Dynasty and if you go to the museum in Cairo, they will tell you exactly that. But when this discrepancy was noticed, the Egyptians refused to admit it and here come the people who dive deeper into this mystery. Between 1991 and 1993, series of studies are made under the direction of Egyptologist John Anthony West and the geologists Robert Schoch. When he learned of all of the controversy, he decided to go see the Sphinx with his own eyes and noticed that indeed the damage of the Sphinx was caused by water. But he also realized that no one wants to hear their opinion. And of course, there was a reason. Most Egyptologists profess Islam and their sacred book is the Quran, as it says that the creation of the world has begun about 6,000 years ago. And because Muslims are extremely devoted of their faith, they wouldn't accept that, for example, something existed 8 or 10,000 years ago. And they will do their best to defend their faith by persuading everyone that before that time was nothing. For example, the pyramids of the first dynasty, which are older than Sahar, are closed and strictly guarded by the military so that no one can approach them. Why? because they're more than 6,000 years old. That is why John West left this community and connected with Robert Schach. He makes a computer analysis and turns out that the Sphinx really has eroded areas caused by water. The computer also calculates that in order to have such cracks, the Sphinx had to be subjected to rainfall for thousands of years, 24 hours a day. How does this sound? Absolutely impossible. This means they calculated that the Sphinx is at least 10 to 15,000 years old. After many disputes, the mass of scientists agree. The official data is that the most ancient civilization is the Sumerian, existed about 3,800 years BC and that before them existed nothing but savages all over the planet. But this discovery changes everything. The results of their research are shown to the whole world in a one-hour documentary entitled The Mystery of the Sphinx, which in prime time was watched by more than 30 million people. Surprisingly, the film announces that these studies reveal a series of mysteries, tunnels and rooms just below the Sphinx. Is this the mystical hole that Casey predicted? Before the answers to these questions are found, the Egyptian authorities led by Dr. Zahi Hawass intervened and stopped the project completely. 
West and Shock are forced to leave and are banned, and Dr. Hawass defines their findings as American hallucinations. In 1995, thinking the wave had passed, West and Shock submit a new application to continue research, but they were directly denied, or, as West says a little later in front of the New York Times, Zaki Hawass practically blocked us. But then something even more curious happened. In 1996, Howes gets a new project and to everyone's surprise, he approves it, bearing in mind that several years ago he had put bonds. Egyptian authorities want to check Sphinx research. However, after a company quite kindly offers and gives 10 million dollars to this project. Then, a short video comes out of course in the center of events and in the spotlight is not just anyone, but Zahi Hawass. His earlier conclusions about American fantasies and hallucinations are gone, and the video shows how he enters one of the underground tunnels through a hole in the Sphinx. And when he's inside, he shares the following. Even Indiana Jones didn't dream of being here. Can you imagine? We are already inside the Sphinx. Exactly in this tunnel, it hasn't been opened before. So far, no one knows what's inside, but we will open it for the first time. Of course, the video ends with the most interesting part and again the questions remain more than the answers. Why did Dr. Howes do that and took advantage of West's discoveries first and then introduced him as the discoverer and the first to open this entrance? What Egyptologists and Egyptian government are hiding about the mysteries in their own country? Do they worry that it wasn't their people who built the Great Pyramids and the Sphinx? What is the secret room and what's really under the Sphinx? We'll continue in the second part of the episode about the mystery of the Great Sphinx in Giza. We bow before you and thank you for your attention. We hope that you find these episodes really interesting. Comment below on which topics do you want us to explore next. Keep your minds safe and until we meet again.